The Freedom Fighters waved to the Teletubbies fondly as they headed back for the zone wall. They had spent the entire day eating tubby toast and enjoying the simple but entertaining games. As the sun began to set, the seri a series of pipe-shaped speakers appeared from the ground, announcing that it was time for tubby bye-bye. As they excited, exited from the zone, they found the sky oddly light for the late afternoon evening. Still, they continued home to not hold. Behind them, a football-shaped spy eye dropped quietly through the zone's wall. Once they reached the village, they went for their separate ways to unpack. Sally returned to the hut. She shared with Bunny. Howdy, girl. Sal Sally girl. Bunny said, looking up from one of the few books in that hole. She had read the book numerous times, but she liked the story, so she was reading through it once again. How did the mission go? Oh, it was kind of inter interesting, Sally said in a bemused smile. It's funny, though. What's that, Sally girl? We were in the zone all day, and I'm not tired at all. Well, it's just getting to the late afternoon, so you couldn't have been gone all day, Bunny. Replied, okay. Giving Sally an odd look. Sally turned, equally perplexed. Yeah, we are gone for hours. Bunny, she replied. Yeah, but all I'd say was about three hours. The walk to and from the zone couldn't have taken more than an hour's hike, so an entire day in the zone must have lasted 60 minutes at max. That's a pretty odd zone, Sally gal. Sally was in deep thought. You're thinking about something I can tell. What is it? Bunny prodded, closing her book. If the zones they last just an hour, last an hour, just for sake of argument, then the entire months could be spent there only a few days. Have passed out there. Show enough. So what? I'm trying to think of a tactical advantage that might present us against Robotnik. Well, I guess if we grow crops there, if in the zone is good for, or that, then we could probably get it food sooner. It would make sense. But we'd have to study how the weather works in that zone. But Bunny, that's a wonderful idea, Sally exclaimed, hugging her friend. It would mean, however, that some freedom fighters would have to would be out of the loop with the real world, and we have no idea how the temporal differences would affect growth, and oh, Bunny, there are so many variables. I'd hate for... This will blow up in our faces. I, I don't even know anymore. I really don't. I know, Bunny said with a small smile, but whatever was in that zone did some serious good for you. Maybe we just let the more wary freedom fighters vacation there or something. Sally smiled at her friend's support and hugged her close. Find Antoine and tell him to join us tomorrow when we go back, she said, heading to for the door. I'm off to find Sonic and the other two. And tell them we're going back. Bunny giggled. You almost sound like you're looking forward to see someone. So I looked too. Well, Tinky Winky can be a sweetheart. How? Sally laughed again. I'll introduce you two tomorrow. Someone, please put me out of my misery. I think I'm suffering from internal hemorrhaging. The Freedom Fighters walked through the forest earlier in the day, and they had set out yesterday that way. They would be able to spend days in the new zone without missing much attention in the rest of the world. After all, that what could Robotic do in one day? They knew that evening that even thinking that was tempting fate, but it was too tempting not to try. Tails rushed ahead when they reached the other five-meter marker. He flew into the zone wall, ripping, letting ripples undulate through the forest scene. Just as quickly as he went in, Tails shot out a look of horror in his face. What is it, Tails? Sally asked. There are swap pots in here, Tails cried, pointing vehemently towards the zone. Oh, now our Brunek has seriously gone too far, Sonic snarled. Take it easy, Sugar Hog, Bunny crooned. Oi, 
funny Antoine started. We oui. look at me. We oui. Antoine snorted. We're all losing the kingdom and the freedom fighters to Robotnik. Yes. Forces every day, every every everying day out. Day, everying day. Yet you are getting all cow-headed over over one zone. That's bull-headed, Antoine. Rotor sighed. Yeah, but Sonic said helplessly. Looking at the zone wall, they're innocents, Antoine, Sally said. They are perhaps only two or three years old in mentality. Maybe less. Rotor stole our t Robotnik stole our toilets. Let's make sure he doesn't steal theirs. With that, the Freedom Fighters snuck into the zone, hoping that the t tremors and the barriers didn't show with from within. As they entered, Sally, Sonic, and Rotor let out a sigh of relief. While swap box had been stationed throughout the zone, nothing had been shot or burnt down in a hovering egomatic sat snively, apparently the supervisor of the project. The zone's numerous slow hills played to the freedom fighters' advantage as as they snuck quickly and quietly towards the central dome. The swap bots were easy to spot and easy to take detours around, while they would be dangerously in the open for the brief crossing through the basin. They were willing to take the chance, that is, until they saw the line of swap bots stationed throughout the strip land between the dome and the hills. What's the plan, Sal? Sonic asked. A diversion would really wor work in the beginning, she muttered. Sonic began to move. No, wait, Sonic sighed. Rolled his eyes and sat heavily. It may work at first, but with all the hills, you might lose your footing. Even if you don't, you'd be forced to stand in plain sight, leaving you open for a sniper shot. <sighs> then what are we doing? Going to do? Ayo, the thick Hockney accent said. The Freedom Fighters jumped, turning to see Dipsy. Antoine squealed aside that's heavy and had to be promptly tackled by the group. Just as the swap ops began to take notice, Dipsy luckily misunderstood the action of the Mobians. Big hug! He drawled and ducked down, embracing his newfound friends. Yeah, we love you too, big guy, Sonic wheezed. Dipsy, Sally said, putting pulling on the Teletubby's hand to keep him kneeling with them. Where are the other Teletubbies? Where are Teletubbies? Dipsy echoed. Looking at Bunny, now sugar, do you know where they are? <laughs> Bunny asked sweetly. Do you know? Do you know? Dipsy echoed, looking at Sonic, who slapped his face in frustration. Look, Dipsy, he said as he grabbed the Tubby's ears and turning his head so that they... Or face to face. Does Dipsy know where the others are? Or dare? The green tubby drawed, drawled, pointing off into the field. There they saw the other Teletubbies, Telly Tubbies, busy, busying themselves with their favorite items. Sally began to formulate a plan. Where when Rotor spoke up, I wonder why Sally hasn't captured them yet. He asked. Maybe he didn't want. Maybe he didn't think them to be a threat, Bunny offered. Or maybe he is waiting for the roboticizer. These are roboting sizer. Did he proofread this? There's no way he could have proofread this. Share the cheer, Aunt. Sonic groaned. No, Sonic. He may be right. Sally sighed sadly. If only we knew what their plans were. As if an answer to their to her prayers, the pinwheel began to spin. Everyone looked at it as a giant Teletubbies howled th through the air and pink stardust streaming from their folds. Uh oh! Uh oh! Dipsy laughed happily while rushing to the Teletubbies, rushing with the other Teletubbies to a special area of the field with head motions. Sally and Sonic chased after them while the others secured a hiding place. Sonic and Sally looked as the Teletubbies watched the screens in their stomachs expectantly. After each screen flashed, Lala's screen flashed on. Lala have it. The yellow Teletubbies cried happily, and the Teletubbies gathered around to watch. 
The screen crackled and snowed until the image of Dr. Robotnik flashed on it. Snively. His deep and ominous voice roared from her tummy. Ooh, the Teletubbies chorused. Oh, wait. Ooh! The Teletubbies cor chorused, entranced. Was that? Yes, sir. Snively's voice whined from the screen. Sonic and Sally looked to where the runty overlander sat in his egg-o-matic. He was looking down at the screen in his control panel. Sonic, the princess gasped. They're picking up Robotnik's comm signal. How is that possible? I do not... I don't know. We're missing the conversation. Hundred hours, Snively asked. Yes. Yes, Snively, Robotnik seethed. Or are the inhabitants of the zone still giving you trouble? No, sir. Oh, no, sir. Snively squeaked. They are fully under control. We'll be ready for it. Excellent. See you then, Robotnik over and out. Roger. We missed all the details, Sally hissed in frustration. Well, at least we know that Robotnik is moving something big here. Sonic offered. To their surprise, the Teletubbies groaned in disappointment until Lala began to chant. Again, 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 again. The other Teletubbies agreed eagerly while Sonic and Sally smiled at each other. Still finding it hard to believe their luck, Lala's stomach screen flashed on again and the image of the Tyrant came up again. Snively, his... Snively! His deep and ominous voice roared from her tummy. Yes, sir. Snively's voice whined from, from the screen. I'm la launching now. I will arrive I, in, with the transportable SWATBOT factory and the prototype portable roboticizer. And exactly ten hundred hours. Ten hundred hours? Snively asked. Yes, Snively, Robotnik seethed. Or are the inhabitants of the zone still willing to get, still giving you trouble? No, sir, Snively squeaked. They are, they are fully under control. We'll be ready for it. Excellent. See you then, Robotnik over and out. Roger. We left at, what, eight in the morning, Sally asked. I don't know, Sal, Sonic grunted, scratching his head. I can't remember the last time I looked at the cl at a clock. I think we did, leaving about an hour ago to get into the zone. That means we have an entire day to get prepared for Robotnik. Sonic chuckled. You may make it sound easy. Here. You're here with us, aren't you, Sally crooned? Sonic's ego swelled visibly. Then it deflated as the flat, nasal voice of Snively rang across the zone. Attention, freedom fighters, I have your friends captive. Reveal yourself immediately, and I will spare their lives for now. Sonic and Sally exchanged desperate looks. What are, are we going to do, Sally? Stand up, I guess. Say what? We have 24 hours. Zone time to escape. You've done that kind of thing in a fraction of the time. Save us all again, huh? That's my only trump card right now, Sonic. I won't let you down, Cell. You never have. With that, the two freedom fighters stood just as Sniper began to warm them. Again, the swap bots took them up roughly by the arms and marched them all into the dome. There is no proofreading involved in this. How did he find you? Sally asked after the door slid shut behind the last of the bo robots. Antoine sneezed. Bunny sighed. I am being so sorry, my princess. Antoine sobbed. Did you manage to find anything out, princess? Rotor asked. Yes, we have the rest of the day in the zone's time to escape and eliminate the swap bots before Robotniks alive arrives. That's not much time, ro ro Robot said. Yeah, all that, and the fat man is bringing a swap factory and a portable roboticizer, Sonic growled. 
Oh, man, stars, money grasps, self-consciously touching her partially roboticized limbs. Don't worry, Aunt Bunny, Tails said in a comforting tone. We'll all get out of here. The guard is, hev is heavy outside, and probably is being made heavier now that Snively has us trapped in here. We still need a diversion. The room went silent as the Freedom Fires began to think, the process seeming to be exceedingly painful for Antoine. Tails began to giggle. Everyone looked up, giving Tails a questioning look. What could possibly be funny? Finding out at this point, Antoine asked frantically, What's the point in time, Sugar Chuan? Bunny corrected, patting his leg. That is what I was saying, Antoine whined. It was just another... It was just thinking... I was just thinking about what happened when Lala wanted Dipsy to wear that dress. That's not how you spell wear. That's not how you spell wear. That's a different kind of wear. Proofread, damn it. That dress yesterday. The young fox giggled. Rotor, Sonic, and Sally chuckled quietly at the memory. That was a tutu, dear. Sally giggled. Hey, Sonic exclaimed, shooting to his feet. I got an idea. Antoine Mur muttered something in French. What does that mean, Ant? Sonic challenged. I am thinking to trans... I am thinking it translates to... Heaven help us, the general's son said with a grin. What? What was your idea, Sonic? Sally asked quickly. I need a diversion, right? Sonic asked. Right, Bunny, and Rotor confirmed. Right, so all we gotta do is get someone to get Dipsy in a tutu, and he'll take out... Uh, and he'll take of running. Snively won't dare let a prisoner get away, especially if old Lardbutt is bringing a roboticizer. Great idea, Sonic, Tails yipped. But the Swapbots might try to hurt Dipsy, Rotor said worriedly. And we can't let him, and we can't get him away. Sally pointed out, sure we can, Sonic said, looking about the dome hurriedly. Searching for an unguarded exit, he found it at the top of the slide, found its way along the central pillar. With a confident grin to his ward, he shot up and out of the dome. Tails caught the meeting of the look and flew it behind him. Do you see him, T2? Sonic called up. They would be spotted soon, so they had to work fast. No, but I swear I saw a face in the sun, Tails said with a... Um, trepidation. What? Never mind, I see him, Tails called, pointing to one area. You're sure that's him? Who else wears a cow-spotted hat? Good point. Halt, Hedgehog Priority One, synthesized voice cracked from... A synthesized voice cracked from the dome. Blue Laser Fire began to fly up at the duo. That's our cue, Sonic sniggered in a shot. They tore their way across the landscape, stopping with a screech. When they reached the green tubby... A-O, Sonic, A-O, Tails, Dipsy drawled. Dipsy, time to wear the tutu, Sonic announced. Tutu, Dipsy asked. What's that? You didn't say it right, Tails scolded him, scolded. In the perfect mimicry of Lala's voice, Tails said, Dipsy, time to wear the part. No, no, run away, Dipsy screeched. With that, he spun around and began sprinting across the scene. Pert, Sonic asked. Skirt. Ah, I see. See, I told you so. You called it a dress, and it's still wrong. <sighs> Laser fire scorched the ground between the two. The swap box came charging across the hills, and the gnolls many firing over their own feet from the terrain while dipsy zipped east through the zone some began blasting off to the west tails flew higher and double backed heading north their bots fell over each other their weak ai fighting to the side how to react 
Snively was alerted to the situation and began barking orders, but to no avail. Despite his chubby exterior when threatened with a tutu, Dipsy's sprinting speed nearly reached Sonic's levels. Swapbots were running into, the, into and shooting each other more than their target. To complicate matters, the Freedom Fighters had seen the chaos rippling outside and made a break for it. Spreading the weeks, Wattbot's force even thinner. In a matter of minutes, Snively found himself alone in enemy territory. No, 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 he whimpered, banging on the control panel. The Freedom Fighters got out of, their sh out of the shadow of his craft. Sally and kept tails grounded. Despite his eagerness to attack Robotic Nephew, she knew the Egomatics had defensive weapons, and she didn't want to take any chances. How do you think we should get him down from there? Rotor asked. And again, the man ain't a hedgehog has an idea, Sonic said with a cocky grin. Antron repeated his French phrases, ign ignoring him. Sonic walked over to Tinky Winky, who was clutching his favorite item. A stylish red leather handbag. Hey, Tinky Winky. Tinky, he said, holding out his hand. Can I see your bag for a second? Okay, the tubby agreed. Taking it over, Sonic swung the bag around the ba the handle faster and faster, using his natural mind-boggling speed to reduce its after images to mere blurs. With a speedy aim, he launched the bag of the Echomatic with a leathery pop. Snively fell limply from the craft, and into the waning arm, waning arms of Bunny, the rabbit tossed the handbag to Sonic and returned it to its owner. Thanks, man. You're welcome, Tinky Winky said with a grin. Sonic grinned back and looked around suspiciously. What is it? Tails asked. I could have sworn I heard something. Someone saying, "Bravo, good shot," Sonic murmured. Sally rolled her eyes and eyes. It's just your ego feeding itself again. Yeah, 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 Sonic replied as he went to join the rest of the group. He never noticed a small bed of flowers, which seemed to wiggle happily despite the lack of breeze. Rotor, any ideas on how to stop Robotnik from landing? Sally asked. I was hoping you would have an idea, Rotor admitted. Maybe Nicole would give us an idea, Sally said, unclipping the counter from her her boot. Why would Robotnik bring a SWATBOT factory here? Tells asked Sally to Ally, asked as Sally talked to the computer. Probably to take advantage of the temporal differences it has with the real world, Robotic replied. I mean, he could turn out a year's worth of swap bots in a few months, which more efficient, much more efficient. Bunny looked unsettled. What's wrong, Bunny? Sonic asked. Well, yesterday Sally and I were talking about how the Freedom Fires might take advantage of the zone. Just the, I just feel a little guilty we had similar plans as Robotnik. Your plans are different, though. Yeah, but it's like, sort of, we wouldn't ha be making soldiers. No, Bunny replied, but we would be making the zone... F we would be taking the zone from the... The... Telling tummies, Antoine offered. Sonic moaned in the rest of it, his face. Teletubbies. Rotor corrected. A re, a wry grin on his face. You got a point there, Sonic admitted. Indeed, she does. Sally said, "We're joining the group." Why? Which is why I think we should follow Nick Scholl's plan. Which is it? Sonic inquired. We steal off this zone from the rest of Mobius. Can we do that? Bunny asked, and the pint-sized Overlander still slung over one shoulder. Yes, Rotor. Using the remains of the down swats and Snively's egomatic, Nishol says you can create a kind of bomb that would blast the Teletubby zone into its own dimension. Rotor took the computer from the princess and looked over the data. Well, it's crazy, but it might work, Ro the walrus mused. Well, it's cra- Make it so, Sally commanded. To everyone's dismay, the pipe speakers began to protrude from the ground, summoning the Teletubbies to bed. Make it fast, she added. What was that Robotnik growled from his seat, the massive transport ship? Scans reveal a small explosion near the, f the zone we are approaching. 
the ship's piloting droid. This isn't Star Wars. This is not Star Wars! Crap. Huh. Any signs of damage? Negative. Well, scan the area for further explosives. And make doubly sure that the landing area is safe. The obese dictator snarled. After a few seconds, the thin-headed droid... It's not Star Wars. Droid looked back at its master. Scan indicate that there is no further dangers in the vicinity. It's worse than Metal Gear. Excellent. Set us down. The massive craft began to touch down. The trees tossing and flying from their foundations as the landing jet blazed. But instead of passing through into the zone, the craft landed fully onto the ground, which bulked under it and caved in. Sirens blared and lights flashed as Dr. Robotnik was jarred from his throne. Once the craft had stopped its self-destructive descent, the Tyrant began to furiously check over the last few seconds of data. The census returns to check the zone, not the reality it covered. Further data showed that the zone was now, for whatever reason, inaccessible. On top of that, the zone had been occupying a space just above one of Mobius' largest sinkholes. The sinkhole had claimed the entire Swapbot factory, smashing it flat. Dr. Robotnik snarled and changed down, charged down the hallways and corridors. A pair of, a pair of doors swished open as he hurriedly stomped in and was, it was a storage room. It had been thrown into a 45-degree angle by the impact. The fragile, portable roboticizer lay shattered at the end of the room opposite of its shelf. As Dr. Robotnik's fury reached the boiling point, he knew his fists... I mean, he threw his fists into the air, billowing. Sni- Snively! He roared. Just outside the crash site, the TV overlander struggled in it in his bonds. The freedom fighters had tied him to a tree before leaving. I'm gonna miss that zone, Tails sighed wistfully. I know, honey. S Sally said with a smile, tucking him in. But we lived in the to but we lived in totally different worlds. And Robotnik would have wrecked it as well as ours. I know, I know. Tails said. Good night, Aunt Sally, the princess leaned over and kissed the young fox in the forehead. Good night, sweetheart, she began to walk out the door. Aunt Sally? Yes, dear. Tuppy toast. Sally laughed the rest of the way to her hut and giggled on in her sleep. That was painful. And oh, so very boring. It mentions them doing things, but it, it doesn't actually show them carrying out any of these tactics. And furthermore, there are Spelling and grammatical errors up the ass. I've seen the original NES version of Metal Gear. This is worse than that. Ghostbusters on NES? Milestone better than this. And this guy speaks English. Whoever hired him because of this one fan fiction should have been fired. Dear God.